Okay, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. As you have seen from the title, as you have seen next to me, I have said goodbye, so long to my Technics SL1200G and made space for a special friend. A turntable that I wanted to have since I learned about high. Bye. What am I talking about? EMT 938. Let's go. Okay, guys, as you see, yes, EMT. I finally made this decision. So, in this video, I want to go a little on the main aspects of this company. It's not going to be a history video, just a few elements to understand what we're talking about. Then I want to tell you what happened with this fellow here. And then we're going to see in depth the turntable, okay? You can find the index here below. Okay, let's start. Uh, I'm sure most of you know about EMT, but a lot don't. So I think it's fun just to go a little, uh, take an overlook on the main aspects of this amazing company. So what is EMT? Electro Mess Technique. So as the name reveals, we're talking about a German company, EMT, Electrical Measurement Technology. And as you can understand from the translation of the acronym, they were mainly dedicated to measurement machinery in the beginning. When, in 1938, they were based in Berlin, they had to move until they finally reached Lahr in the southwestern part of Germany in 1945, at the end of the war, and finally started to dedicate themselves to, um, at a certain point, turntables and all the different parts of turntables, because as we know, um, LP was mainly distributed, mainly started to be distributed in 1948. In fact, we have to wait 1950 for their first third table. Who is the genius behind all of this that started this company? Wilhelm Franz. I wanted to say this. It's important. Thank you, Franz, for this amazing heritage you're leaving us. Okay, apart from this... What is the, the myth? They, they developed during the years all the way up to 1989 when a Belgian company took over, unfortunately, the German one, the Barco, which became EMT Barco. And at that point, all the different products slowly faded away in, in, in the subsequent years, also because CD technology was taking over. But between 1950 and, between, and, and all the way to 1989, an amazing array of turntables were developed. Different kinds all reference turntables in their sector. For example, the 927 and the 930, which were mainly uh, idler types of turntables. But they're mainly renowned for their direct drive turntables. Oh yes, baby. So what am I talking about? Well, mainly, I'm sure you heard about EMT 950, the king. The EMT 950 was released in the early 70s. The among It is still is the one of the best turntables out there that you can buy. Obviously, you have to service it. You have to make bring everything in perfect condition. Otherwise, you're not going to have that standards, that quality. It's huge. It's big. So you can't fit it, fit it anywhere. And obviously, as you can imagine, this type of turntable was, and also the ones before, were developed for professional use, for broadcast use. This is a broadcast turntable. All their products were never meant for home or we could say music production, home environments, consumer market. Nope. Now they're becoming, well now, in the last 20 years, they're becoming even more famous 
after some very awkward and strange reviews that they did uh, where people did not know how to use this technology and made bad reviews and EMT went even further down but then people understood the high quality and started to buying them and bring them back in excellent conditions and now again they are among the best turntables and you can buy especially for direct drive plus EMT now resurged from his ashes and finally now it's producing a whole line of amazing cartridges some of which are stereophile class a plus other uh, accessories and machineries always in the pro environment even though the the cartridges can be purchased by anyone and used in any any type of turntable not only emt so also sme ortofon things like that types of, of tone arms so let's take a step backward and let's go back to our uh, original emt now at 950 top of the nine top notch i would love to have the space to, to, to have one i should get rid of my Telefunken M15 to put one. What comes after that? A reduced version, still broadcast, the 948. And both of them had, like all, the, like um, the Studers, like the Telefunkens, all had the electronics separated in compartments on these cards. So you could easily service the turntable and fastly, rapidly. So after the 948, which is much more compact. Finally, we have this little jewel here, the 938, the smallest of all, and actually the last turntable of EMT because we're in 1982 when this was released the first time, where we have just two large boards, one for the um, electronics of the turntable and one for the, um, the preamplifier. So much more much more traditional we could say less pro but still high high end and only for broadcast and unfortunately that was already in the declining phase because as i said cd was coming out and there is also two or three excellent cd player models from emt okay so let's go now let's pass on to all the dif difficulties I had to go through because it's important to understand that if you want a vintage turntable or you spend double its value in order to have everything perfect everything serviced you don't have to think about anything great if you have the money do it if not you're probably going to get something medium in medium condition and then you're going to have to work on it now I had a lot of problems and I'll tell you what happened but that that's not always going to happen but it's good to know it's good to know okay so I purchased my first uh, 938 uh, actually a few months ago in Germany unfortunately the seller sent it without adopting the special solutions integrated in the turntable which I'll show you after in order to fix the platter and the motor they didn't do that so it arrived here damaged I had to send it back in Germany they, they they noticed that the whole motor had bad damage so they sent me another one which fortunately that was very nice actually which they had another one it came back they, they finally fixed the motor and the platter but there was other problems unfortunately with the brake and even the the, the flotation system so I had to send it back this time I decided where where well if you want to service EMT turntables you have two main options I would say which are still based in LAR why because these are people engineers technicians that used to work for the original EMT who I'm talking about well Mr. Douche and HM Fabricius uh, I did purchase a few things from Douche but I decided to send my um, turntable to Fabricius, which I must admit that he is amazing. Very, very knowledgeable, very, very nice, uh, available for anything. He sent me the back, the turntable repaired in perfect condition. He had to recap the whole thing. He had to even recap an, an extra part that this was missing very very nice and he sent me the whole package without even waiting for the payment i mean he completely trusted me and i think this is something rare 
not only he is very uh, prepared for for servicing this, but he's also an excellent human being. So thank you, uh, Hans Michel Fabricius. So he did an excellent work here. As I said, he had to recap, he had to recalibrate everything, and uh, I also purchased a fantastic new cartridge because th we have mainly three cartridges now. The, well, there there are other ones, but the main ones are uh, which somehow substitute the famous TSD-15. What are we talking about? We're talking about the TSD, here we are. The TSD SPH, which means spherical. Then the TSD SFL, super fine line, which I got. And these are used mainly for most more modern records or even reissues done today. The spherical you're going to use in uh, before the 80s, we could say, for older records. Plus, we have the top of the line, the TSD MRB, which is the uh, multi-radius and boron cantilever cartridge. Multi-radius stylus and boron cantilever cartridge. Wow. Very, very expensive. Excellent specs. And these, as I said, are still used today and are zero fire class A quality. I mean, people are going crazy. And there's also much, many other ones, even, even better out actually. But these are more the classic types. And I wanted a classic type, but hopefully a new one for this turntable. Now we're going to go more in depth and take a look at the different parts of the turntable. And then I'll tell you the sonic characteristics and how it compares since we're talking about a direct drive to the Technics. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, now I have the video camera in my hand because I want to show you in detail all the aspects of this turntable of the EMT 938. Okay, first of all, as you can see, unfortunately, the cover, the dust cover isn't very transparent because this is original. It comes from the 80s and it has a lot of scratches. I tried to rejuvenate the whole thing, but unfortunately, it's always going to retain a few scratches. So it's not going to be perfect. I've seen these in perfect condition go for $500, a little less than that. Wow, I'm not going to spend that money for this. So this is staying here since I do have one. And the cool part is that it's made in a certain way and that is why I want to keep it because I could buy a different one, just a new one and just put it on top like that, but it's not going to work. I want this feature and you're going to need this original part. See, it has special notches to do this. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the on and off button. As you can see, a nice lead turns on when it's operating. Here are other buttons. This is to make the platter rotate. This is instead the button that you use to lower and higher the toner. And afterwards, we're going to take a look at that. Plus, we have the different speeds here. As you can see, 33, 45, and the glorious 78. So you can play anything on that and this baby. Okay, here we could see the sink lead, which is very cool. And if that is turned on, you know that the turntable is perfectly synchronized with the speed, with the selected speed. Obviously, you have great precision here. I've noticed a higher precision here than the Technics, especially also in the start and stop features. Now, look at this. Now, I'm going to turn off the platter. Did you see that? It immediately stopped. Immediately. The Technics still drifts a little bit. And if I push press it again, it immediately starts and it goes immediately in sync because it's a broadcast turntable. It had to do this. So no wonder, no, nothing amazing here, but it is amazing the way it works perfectly. Over here, we also have a headphone output, a very simple headphone output, 6.35 millimeter, 
very nice obviously unfortunately i would say it has a fixed volume i'm sure inside there is a way to regulate this i don't know how actually but i'm sure you can the output is rather high i also used my hi-fi man planner headphones and these are very difficult to drive and they work perfectly here so no problem i want to show you here below where we you can regulate the output of both channels wow and here you also have the indication of which type of electronics you have on board you have the preamplifier or for the tsd which is a moving coil which is the best of the best or the simple magnetic cartridges 47 kilo ohms here as you can see the white spot is on mc coil type as you can see the dynamic one while here it shows this white dot that it is inserted because you can still have the white dot but you may not have it inserted so you have to check these two or these two are present in order to be sure that there is something in there and not just an empty box you can still use it you don't need the preamplifier and i'll sh and i'll tell you why in a second but it's better at least to have the full experience the full emt experience to try this especially with the tsd 15. obviously the new modern cartridges are fully compatible now the tsd cartridge fantastic little jewel this is a moving coil this is not a head shell this whole thing is the cartridge actually you get your nice little box with its seal of quality all handwritten you also get the measurements of each single cartridge showing its frequency response very cool and this is the amazing 929 tone arm one of the best tone arms that still people are using in other turntables it's so good very simple here you set the uh, the tracking force which is usually 2.5 grams with this type of of cartridge here you have the weight in order to balance everything obviously always use an, a digital scale to make sure plus you also have this little gizmo here but behind for the anti-skating very very simple I'll just want to show you how this goes up and down now I'll put a record okay now before we start just a few other things first of all I wanted to say that these parts here on the sides are not part of the general original turntable these were used only as you can see here to position the turntable on a dedicated EMT table support rack in order to uh, have a better operation in the broadcast environment okay so that's something external but i like i wanted to leave it to have a little higher mass plus the one of the most important things actually i forgot to say the chassis the inner chassis of the turntable is floating completely decoupled and this is something that you find in high quality turntables of the past i don't know why they don't do it today this is an amazing feature which greatly decouples and the, 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 the turntables from the general chassis and reduces vibrations fantastic guys so today we're going to take a look we're going to listen to uh, one of my friend's records jeffrey scott greer this is volume three this is a test pressing is about to publish this on funk night records very cool thank you jeff for sending me over these test pressings and as you can see here the cool part to find i think you can see it correctly the track is this magnifying glass you have on the typical emt cartridges where there's a red line so you know precisely where is the stylus so you just pick it up and you position it where you want it on the record very precisely now i'm going to click this and it's going to lower the tone arm mechanically with an electronic motor inside let's listen
stable. Okay, I just wanted to say two more things. First of all, if you want, I'm gonna do a subsequent video where I'm gonna show you how to do your own tone arm cable. Yes, because below here inside the, the turntable, you have to unscrew the lower part. Inside there's a plug directly connected to the tone arm. You can take out the one connected to the um, integrated preamplifier, the MC preamplifier, and hook up your own cable, which is quite difficult to do. And it costs an arm and a leg if you buy it online, if you find it, because it's difficult to find. Once you've done that, you can connect the tone arm to any external phono preamplifier you want, which is very, very cool and useful. So you can experiment with different types of cartridges with different types of pre phono preamps. And obviously, you can also find, here's an image, uh, a dedicated head shell. There are adapters, okay, to insert uh, the typical SME or Ortofan head shells, but don't get those because you're, you're adding another joint, another signal interruption. Instead, there are dedicated head shells where you can easily position your own cartridge. Any type, no problem at all. There's also a dedicated alignment protractor which will help you in positioning the cartridge at the right part because obviously you have to get a head shell with lines empty lines so you can put the cartridge a little above a little lower check the azimuth check the correct positioning in referment to this type of turntable you can find them on eBay that's where I got it otherwise just go with a ba basic package but in any case, I'm sure at a certain point you want to experiment and that is the way to do it. Okay guys, uh, I just want to show you the rear of this fantastic baby. I'm not going to turn it around. I'm going to show you a picture. Here it is. As you can see, we have two XLR balance outputs instead of RCA cables. This is a pro type of turntable, as you know, plus also a balanced output for a balanced type of connection headphones very very cool on the right you're gonna see this um, plug which is usually found on computers and things like that for a remote control then you have the IEC uh, inlet the possibility to change the fuse and I do recommend to put a high quality fuse and also the possibility to regulate um, voltage okay that's it very simple very nice Okay, now I wanted to show you the structure below this platter. So we're gonna take off the mat. This is the classic EMT rubber mat, very heavy weighted, as you can imagine. This is the platter itself. You already have these two holes also for taking it away, but also for inspecting, see? Maybe you can't see. In any case, you can take a look at the screws, the red screws, and if you want, directly open them from here instead of removing the whole platter. But I want to show you what's below here. So we're going to take these off. Okay, so you put your fingers in the holes and remove this steel i believe platter and as you can see you have direct access to the motor now this is the brake which a lot of times has issues so unfortunately you have to make sure this is perfectly working and in order to send an emt turntable you have to screw down these three red screws as it says here Achtung, attention transport sikerung transport locking screws one is for the chassis one is for the motor these are for the chassis so you block the, the the platter it doesn't move as you know this is floating so you fix that 
and then you also fix these three screws you have to obviously open them and shift them against the motor all three so it will stay in position At that point you have the motor fixed and the the platter the table itself the chassis down that is the correct way to send this baby anywhere okay okay guys so did you enjoy the tour okay let's talk a little bit about the sonic characteristics now as i said this is the more modest we could say type of model the other ones are much better but still we are looking at a very exceptional piece of technology in my opinion the sound is better than the Technics. It's not miles ahead, okay? I have noticed a lot more precision. Uh, again, I know I, I often say this, but this is where I noticed the quality in certain cartridges, tone arms, and uh, turntables in this case. The transients, uh, the timber, how a specific instrument is supposed to sound in certain passages. I've just noticed a very precise sound stage and reproduction of the instruments. I did use a, the Dina Vector on this turntable in the first one when it re, when it came here, which is the same cartridge I used on a Technics. So I did have an equal comparison. Obviously, this has a different arm, but it's part of this system. And again, what I just said is perfectly confirmed. I've noticed this more this this into focus reproduction of the sound stage of the instruments and how they sound that is the main difference i would say then the rest is top notch i mean the technics is excellent this is slightly better like if the technics is i don't know at 8 the EMT 938 is at 10 two notches above but as we know the more you go up in quality the more you have to, let's say, spend, the more you have to elaborate, the more you have to implement technology to go that extra notch because it's becoming difficult to go higher and higher in quality. It's not easy to double that. No, <laughs> that's that's valid in all technologies and on turntables. When you're high end, go even higher, it's difficult. And this reaches that, but just a little bit. So, if you're out for a Technics, that's already an excellent turntable. Absolutely. I prefer this sound signature. As Fabrizio said to me, you can't fiddle around that much with EMT. That's the downside. I mean, you really have to stick, well, that's at least the better option, with its package, its system. It's a closed system, the turntable, with its 929 tone arm, with its TSD cartridge, with its preamplifier, but as I told you, you can also switch these actually, so you can do some mods, but this is the traditional and more faithful and philosophical reproduction of their type of style, of their engineering, of their brand, which was in the radios in Germany and not only for uh, in the world for a very long time. Okay, guys, so one last recommendation if you want to know a little more of the world of emt uh, which i forgot to say the logo i love the logo uh, here it is since the early stages they had this fantastic logo which i adore which is the electric signal passing through an electronic circuit if you're wondering what that means in any case if you want to know more about emt and the different turntables I want to recommend a fantastic book by Stefano Pazzini. He also has a great internet site, which I will post. I will put all the shops of Fabrizius, of Douche, and also the site of Stefano Pazzini. He's an expert, together also with Fabrizius. They both curated this book, which is in Italian, English, and German. So it's accessible from everyone. The only problem is that it's very difficult to find. Unfortunately, they printed only a few copies. In any case, if you're lucky, grab one because there's all the information inside here to know about this amazing company. Okay, guys, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments here below. If you have an EMT turntable, tell me. Tell me what, you're, what you think about them, what their Sonic's characteristics are uh, impressing you much, are engaging you more. I'm very interested. And as you know, remember, music is born analog. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.